Spirity is an adorable pixel graphics RPG about moving to a rural town and continuing your journey as a writer. During your time there, you meet a large variety of NPCs, catch bugs and fish, and help to restore the town. What makes Spirity stand out from other cozy games is that to help restore the town, you must find various spirits that trouble the day-to-day -day lives of the villagers. With the help of Wanyan, you aid the villagers in catching these pesky spirits and sending them to the bathhouse, which sits as your main form of income in the game. I've been meaning to play this game since its launch last year, and finally, I have gotten around to it. In this video, I'll be showcasing my gameplay over the first 30 days in Spirity and discussing my favourite aspects of the game, since it has numerous things that make it stand out from other cosy games. So, without further ado, here are my first 30 days in the beautiful world of Spirity. On my first day, I got onto the bus to start my new life. I was pleasantly surprised that you could choose the name of your town, like how you can choose the name of your island in Animal Crossing, so that was pretty fun and I ended up going with Cozy Cove, which coincidentally is also the name I chose for my island in Animal Crossing's New Horizons. After creating my adorable little pixel character, I was asked to select my birthday, which was pretty cool. I'm yet to play a cozy game with this feature, so this was definitely a refreshing surprise to me, but unfortunately my birthday is later in the year, so I wasn't able to see what happens on my in-game birthday. I did try to look it up because I was really curious, but unfortunately I couldn't find anything, but I guess that's kind of a blessing in disguise because once my in-game birthday does roll around, whatever happens will be a complete surprise. This game's introductory scene was very reminiscent of Stardew Valley and showcased the beautiful landscape of Spirity. One thing I absolutely love about this game is the pixel design. They're minimal, yet they're so detailed at the same time, and as someone who's a big fan of game graphics like this, it was so visually appealing to me and I felt super relaxed whilst playing. The first character we meet is Miko, who showed me to my new house. This walk to my new house was an opportunity for the game to showcase the town's environment and the various villager houses and local shops. This rundown from Miko was super helpful as it gave me a basic idea of where everything was situated. Once I reached my new home, I had a quick look around, familiarising myself with my storage chest, my bathroom, my kitchen and my bed before going to sleep. The next morning, Amelia greeted me and gave me some food, which was very nice of her, and she also provided me with the basic gameplay mechanics. It was here where I was able to open the town map for the first time and oh my gosh, I love it. Look at the little buildings bopping around. It's so adorable. I'm honestly obsessed with it. Anyways, I am a writer after all, so Amelia took me to the local shop to get my hands on a desk. Whilst I was there, I met Moby, who is very cute, might I add, before Amelia returned with an old desk that I could use. Moby helped me set it up in my house and once that was sorted, we had our first spooky encounter. The rice ball that Amelia gave me started to move and then disappeared, which freaked Moby out and he admitted to me that the townsfolk feel as if Cozy Cove is haunted. Another villager suddenly entered, really scaring poor Moby, I mean look at him on the floor, bless him, but anyways this is Young who runs the local temple in Cozy Cove. He told me that his associate named Jan was willing to help me meet the remaining villagers, so I went outside to meet Jan only to find out that Jan was a dog. I'm a huge dog lover so I was very happy to meet her and she was very useful in helping me track down and meet my new fellow townsfolk. I mean, look at how easy this is, I've even got a little checklist and everything to keep track of who I have and haven't met yet. After meeting almost everyone, I decided to call it a night and find the remaining villagers tomorrow. On day 3, I was tasked with seeing Tifa about her tea sample that she wanted to give me, so I went to visit her immediately and she gave me some fresh tea leaves which I took home to use. I then drank the spirit tea and met Wanyan who explained to me that the town was full of troublemaking spirits who have become lost because the townsfolk had stopped worshipping and leaving temple offerings. This is where Wanyan said that he desperately needed my help to rescue these spirits and help them remember who they were. Of course I was going to help them so I headed to the eastern part of the map to meet Wanyan. Here lies the bathhouse, an abandoned building in Cozy Cove that used to be cared for by the spiritual members of the town. In return for the building's maintenance and care for the spirits, the humans were paid for their service. I actually found out that the previous bathhouse owner actually lived at my new home before me, but Wanyan wasn't too sure how long she'd been gone for. In order to open the bathhouse, I needed to find a spirit who was in possession of the key, so I headed to a place that had lots of sweets, the local convenience store. 
With my new spirit vision, I was able to spot the spirits who quickly ran away and I'm not gonna lie, it took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to catch them because they moved so quickly, but eventually I managed to stop them and I gained access to the bathhouse. Wanyang gave me a tour of the bathhouse and a quick rundown of how to run it smoothly and earn extra money by offering the spirits a pleasant experience whilst attending to the bathhouse. So I began working my first day and at the end of the day I earned myself a tidy little profit which was a nice change to being completely skint at the beginning of the day. As I was heading home, Wanyan stopped me as they wanted to show me the town's notice board where villagers would ask for help after their paranormal experiences. This notice board acted as a quest provider for me and gave me prompts to seek out the lost spirits, help the townsfolk and provide inspiration for the book that my character is writing. On day four, Wanyan was waiting for me to wake up so that he could show me my notebook where I would be jotting down information about various townsfolk and their experiences with the lost spirits. This proved to be super helpful as I have terrible short term memory so being able to check my notebook during various quests was extremely handy in helping me rescue the lost spirits that have been troubling the townsfolk. So I headed to Moby's apartment whilst he was sleeping, which is kind of weird of me to do, but it's okay. I'm technically helping him out here by ridding him of this spirit from his bathroom. So hopefully he'll let me off for just walking into his flat whilst he's asleep. But anyways, Wanya managed to jog this spirit's memory and they revealed themselves to be a Morinoba spirit. And with that, we had our third spirit to visit the bathhouse. On my way to the bathhouse, I ran into Faye, the local carpenter who was in charge of upgrading the bathhouse for me if I had the money to do so. Right now, 2,500 and 5,000 moolags was a lot of money and I was not going to be able to do anything just yet, but that's okay, I'll get there eventually. I opened the bathhouse once again and started tending to the spirits. My first Morinoba spirit showed up and oh my gosh, I was not expecting them to be that large, so it was kind of an obstacle at first because they took up a lot of room. They also didn't get along with the red spirits, which sucked because placing spirits that don't get along next to each other results in unhappy customers and less tips at the end of the day. The bathhouse's reminder poster was helpful in reminding me how to care for the spirits, but it wasn't as helpful when it came to indicating which spirits got along and which didn't. That was something I had to navigate myself and memorize it to my best ability because you best believe I do not want to be losing any money here. It was during this shift that I realised how tricky it was going to be with just the one bath as the Morinoba spirits were so big and took up the majority of the bath space, so I made purchasing an extra bath my main priority. Suddenly, this happened for the first time, which really confused me at first until I realised that my character had increased their spirituality, meaning that I could now see more spirits around the town. Honestly, I, I really like this animation and every time it would happen in the future, I'd be doing a little dance along with the funky music that they use to accompany this animation. I'm going to like play it out here for you now just so you can see what I'm talking about. Honestly, Spirity's soundtrack in general is another standout part of the game for me. Not only is it subtle and relaxing, but it's also quite quirky, which reflects the game's liveliness and comedic writing. At the end of my shift, yes, I'm going to keep saying shift because technically it is a shift and I am a working woman clocking in for shifts at the Spirit Bathhouse, nothing unusual to see here. Anyways, at the end of my shift, I nearly had enough money to purchase an extra bath, which was great. But on my way home, I visited Sujin, as she has been experiencing problems with someone vandalising her boat. With my spirit vision, I was able to catch and rescue this spirit, which meant I now had another spirit who would visit the bathhouse and leave poor Sujin's boat alone. The next day, I headed to the town notice board to see a new quest to solve an issue with the temple bell. It wasn't working properly, and I had a slight feeling I might know why. While searching for the temple, I ran into Moby and spoke to him to progress our friendship a little bit and found some of the small temples around the map where I could give offerings to please the spirits. Once I found the town bell, I couldn't see any spirits and realised that I should probably find Young to see if that would trigger the quest. So I spoke to him about the temple and luckily when I returned and interacted with the bell, I found the spirit that was causing the problem. It turned out to be this chunky boy who was hiding underneath the bell and stopping it from ringing. With another spirit under my belt, the temple was back to normal and we had another customer at the bathhouse. 
I spent the rest of the day in the bathhouse, tending to the spirits and earning enough money to buy another bath, which would come in handy because it was starting to get a little bit crowded with just the one bath. On my way home, I ran into Ling, who mentioned that Bruce had been feeling down lately and that it could be related to the broken glass that he saw in his house the other day. I figured this must be the doing of another spirit, so I made a mental note to address this tomorrow. I started off day six with some writing, reflecting on the recent events and contributing to my book. A couple of in-game hours had passed and I was ready to start rescuing some spirits. I found Bruce, who told me about the recent supernatural experiences happening at his house, but when I visited his house, I did find the broken picture frame, but there was no spirit, which was confusing. So I spoke to Bruce some more and he gave me some information about the broken picture frame of his parents. Wanyan then hinted that I should check back on Bruce's house during the week whilst he was at work, but right now, unfortunately, it's Saturday, so I had some time to kill before I could progress with this quest. I actually couldn't go to the bathhouse either since Faye was working on the bath upgrade, so I checked out the local shop and saw the medium backpack which was annoyingly just out of my price range, so I couldn't buy that until I'd worked another day at the bathhouse. Since I didn't have too much to do, I decided to end the day early. On my seventh day, I did some more writing, but I have to admit I had been playing for a few hours at this point and I was feeling a little bit lazy, so I ended up sleeping for the rest of the day because I wanted a fast track to Monday so that I could continue Bruce's quest and return to the bathhouse. It was now my second week in Cozy Cove and I headed straight to Bruce's house to confront the spirit who was interfering with his parents' photo. It turns out that Bruce's parents unknowingly destroyed this spirit's shrine when they built this house and the spirit has been vandalising their photo as revenge. I offered this spirit a new home in the bathhouse but he wouldn't budge until I found him a new shrine to live in. Luckily there happened to be an empty shrine by the high school, after spending some money to repair the shrine it was ready for the spirit to move into but Bruce was now back at home so the spirit had disappeared and I had to wait until tomorrow. It was now the next day and I was able to take Bruce's house spirit to the repaired shrine and just like that we had another spirit to visit the bathhouse which was great and our little spirit community is slowly growing. Now that the bathhouse was open again and I had a brand new bath for the spirits I opened up the bathhouse and began working and let me tell you it was so much easier with an extra bath but space was still pretty low once the bigger spirits showed up and I knew that I had to work a lot for the next few days in order to earn enough money to pay for the next bath upgrade. I kept working until late in the evening and by the end of my shift I was already halfway there to another bath which was great news. I cleaned up the bathhouse before I got a warning that I was feeling tired so I hastily ran home and checked out the notice board on the way home to find another quest posted on the notice board. It's now my 10th day in Cozy Cove and I'm feeling pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. It had been a couple of days since I'd last played so I had a quick flick through my notebook to refresh myself on the current quests before heading outside. I spoke to Kenzo and he's actually pretty cute so I figured that I should try out some of the game's hangout mechanics for the first time. It's super handy having each character's hobbies in a notebook but you can also figure them out simply through asking if they want to do something specific. So I asked Kenzo if he wanted to go treasure hunting because that sounded pretty fun. He even had a map which was cool and it allowed me to check out the collections page for the first time and honestly I love it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie I'm gonna sound like a broken record when I say how much I love the game's graphics and design but it's so beautiful and lively and I just can't get enough of it. So yeah prepare to hear me say this a lot during this video. The treasure map was pretty confusing to me since I'm still getting used to the map and I have to admit I did cheat and google it, I'm sorry, I just I wanted to make it a bit easier for myself but anyways once I'd looked it up we headed to the treasure which was located to the right of the bathhouse. Unfortunately I took quite a while to make my way over because I kept getting distracted and once it hit 9am Kenzo had to head to work so I went to the treasure's location by myself. I found a spirit tomb which I wasn't too sure what it was meant to do but it sounded cool and I'm sure it will come in handy eventually. I then visited Bruce at the school to see how he was doing and just like that things with his parents shrine had gone back to normal. Who would have thought honestly I don't know how that possibly could have happened. <laughs> I'm such a good luck charm thank you Bruce it's nothing to do with my spirituality at all nope not one bit. He then started asking advice on whether to grow facial hair or not so I took that as my cue to leave and as I headed away Wanyan stopped me to check on how Bruce's spirit was doing in his new home. They offered to buy things from me that I wanted to get rid of which was super handy as it would provide me with some extra income. 
After speaking to Julian and getting more information about the mysterious thief that was stealing from his restaurant and finding out that it even happens whilst he's in the kitchen, like it would happen right under his nose, which I don't know about you guys, but it's kind of sounding like a spirit to me. I did go to Julian's restaurant, but the spirit wasn't spawning since Julian wasn't there yet, so I had to wait until Julian arrived to trigger this interaction. Once Julian had showed up, I spoke to the spirit and they refused to leave until he tasted Julian's famous soup that had been passed down from his family. He'd lent the recipe to Tifa because of course he did, so I found Tifa who had actually lost the recipe because of course she did. <laughs> After giving me some leads, I found the recipe pretty quickly and ran home to attempt to follow this recipe, except I didn't have any of the ingredients, so I needed to head back outside to see what I needed. To obtain Julian's family recipe, I need crimson shrimp soup, soy sauce and a demon pepper, all of which were things that I had no idea how to obtain. After help from Google, I found out that I could purchase soy sauce and forage a demon pepper next to the bathhouse, which was thankfully pretty easy. However, making the crimson shrimp soup was more of a lengthy process. To make this soup, I needed ugly grass, shrimp, and spicy peppers. Luckily, I could buy the spicy peppers and shrimp from Song's store, however, I did run into a bit of an issue with foraging the ugly grass. I don't really know why this was happening, but when I was trying to interact with the ugly grass, nothing was really happening. I looked it up and found out that it's actually been quite a common glitch for a lot of players, so I figured I'd attempt it again tomorrow, but for now I figured I'd spend the rest of the day working at the bathhouse. I only worked for a few hours since my character was starting to get tired, but hey, I made a little bit of extra income which is always better than nothing. Wanyan spoke to me about hiring another townsfolk to help out the bathhouse as it was just beginning to get busy, so I bared that in mind as I headed home to call it a night. The next day, I bought everything I needed for Julian's recipe, which left the demon pepper and ugly grass that could only be found through foraging around town. I was still unable to forage the ugly grass for some reason, so I tried a new bit of ugly grass on the beach and fortunately it worked. I then foraged the demon pepper next to the bathhouse, which meant I had everything I needed to make Julian's family recipe. But I decided to wait until tomorrow and work another shift at the bathhouse since I was running low on money. I left the bathhouse at around 10.30 and once I was home I made the soup that would get rid of the spirit bothering Julian. This was my first experience with the cooking mechanic and I have to say I really enjoyed it. It was pretty straightforward and I enjoyed the little transition of the food going from a silhouette to like a little pixel icon, if that makes sense. I don't know, I'm not the best with words sometimes. All in all, day 11 was a lot shorter than day 10. I think day 10 was probably the longest segment so far, but at least I managed to cook Julian's recipe and get some extra cash from the bathhouse. On day 12, I was looking forward to solving Julian's quest, but since I had to wait a little bit later in the day, I thought it would be fun to try and catch some bugs. After an embarrassing amount of attempts, I caught my first bug, which was fun, so I thought why not give fishing a go? You guys, I, I suck at fishing. <laughs> I just, I couldn't get the hang of it. I was trying so hard. I looked it up and I still couldn't grasp it, which was definitely a me issue. It's no fault of the games, obviously. But yeah, I sucked at that. So I decided to head to Julian's restaurant and confront his spirit for the last time and gain another visitor at the bathhouse. Julian was happy that the food thief was gone and this was where I found out that you can actually make your own food in the restaurant with the help of Julian. This was honestly really fun to do and the food design is super cute as well and all in all it was a pretty relaxing time and something that I will definitely come back to at some point in the future. Afterwards I wanted to hang out with Tifa because I think she's pretty cute and I also really like her hat but um, anyways we did catch a couple of bugs together which raised our friendship a lot and made me realise how easy it will actually be to get to know the townsfolk here, which is great. And not only can I recruit some of them to work at the bathhouse, but I can also spend lots of time with the characters I'd like to romance in the future. Even though dating and marrying NPCs aren't currently in the game, I do have high hopes that it will be implemented in a future update, so I have got several candidates in mind. Yes, I said candidates plural because there are several that I'd like to date. <clears throat> Anyways, moving swiftly on, after hanging out with Tifa, I returned home to do some writing and at this point I was actually about a quarter of the way through my book, which was quite cool, but anyways, I then decided to call it a night. The next day, I stored the bugs that I'd caught yesterday in my chest because, to be honest, I kind of forgot this chest was here. 
Um, anyways, I headed to the town notice board and there were no quests, which sucked. So I headed to the bathhouse to spend the day working there and increasing my spirituality so that I could find more spirits around town. Nothing too exciting happened today, but at least I now had enough money to buy a bigger bath because God knows I need it with all of these new spirits coming in. On the way home, I bought some new recipes because with the stores rotating stock every day, I wanted to get my hands on as many recipes as I could. I then caught a ladybug before going to bed early. It has officially been two weeks since I moved to Cozy Cove and I've been making decent progress with unlocking new spirits, but obviously I still had lots to do. Unfortunately, there were still no new quests on the town notice board, so I returned to the bathhouse and spent the day working there again. I decided to leave at around 5pm and on my way home I spent 5,000 moolags to buy a new bath. With some extra cash under my belt, I had another early night. So unfortunately I don't have any footage for day 15 or 16 as my screen recorder crashed as it was trying to save the footage. This was pretty frustrating because it was about like an hour and a half worth of footage but the least I could do is give you guys a quick summary of what happened. Day 15 was pretty unproductive, there were no tasks with the townspeople and the bathhouse was closed since it was being upgraded so I spent most of the day catching bugs and chatting to villagers. Day 16 on the other hand was way more productive, I worked at the bathhouse all day and with my shiny new bath and my spirituality increased I am now back to getting tasks again from the notice board. On day 17 I wanted to get a head start on the new quest from Lee, the local painter whose artwork has recently been vandalised. As I was walking around, I was suddenly stopped by Wanyan. I was pretty confused because there seemed to be nothing happening, so I just ignored it, thought it was a glitch, and then went about my day. I tried to do some fishing again with no success, so I quickly gave up on that and then chatted to Lee about his painting. I found out that he's only painting on Monday and Wednesday between 9am and 3pm, which kind of threw a spanner in the works because it meant that I'd have to wait until next Monday to continue this quest. So I returned to the bathhouse once again, except this time instead of working, I decided to chop all of the wood to donate to the repairs of the bridge so that the townspeople can access the spa. What I didn't notice was that it will also cost 15,000 moolags as well, so it's going to take me a little while to get this bridge fixed since I want to prioritise buying the final bath for the spa. After trying and failing to catch a bug, I spoke to Moby, Sora and Gale before hanging out with Lee at the karaoke bar since he loves to sing. The gameplay for the karaoke was super fun and it was pretty easy to pick up, I just had to hit W, A, S, D or C in time with the music in order to get points and if I missed a key then I would lose points. And I only went and got an S rating on my very first try, I was so pleased with myself and on that positive note I decided to stop hanging out with Lee and be a little bit lazy and sleep until the next day because since Lee's quest was now halted I didn't have much else to do. The next day I woke up to a wholesome letter from Lee, which was cute. I wasn't too sure what I was going to do today since my only available quest had to wait until next Monday. So I went to the store to stock up on some supplies and sold some of the stuff I didn't need. I then went to the bathhouse to work for another day and rake in some extra money. Honestly, having this extra big bath was so handy. It saved so much space for the smaller spirits who could chill in the smaller baths whilst the bigger spirits could relax in the bigger baths. At this point I'd really gotten the hang of taking care of the bathhouse but things were starting to get busier and I was definitely going to need a helping hand at some point so I wanted to keep spending time with Tifa in hopes that she'd help me out in the future. On day 19 I headed straight back to the bathhouse and worked until around 4pm before attempting to hang out with Gail but unfortunately both of her preferred hangout spots weren't available which sucked so I should probably work on that. I bought some new bath towels for the spa since it was starting to get busier and then purchased the final bath upgrade for the bathhouse. Tifa happened to be at the karaoke bar so I thought it would be a good idea to spend some more time together catching bugs so that we could progress our friendship more. That weird pop-up thing with Wanyan happened again but I ignored it and kept bug catching with Tifa and it actually went pretty well. So well in fact that we actually ended up levelling up our friendship which was great, she was the first person that I had levelled up friendship with. She actually ended up giving me a gift which was really cute, she gave me a photo from her hiking trip which I would definitely be displaying at some point in the future. I also spoke to Amelia who mentioned that someone's been messing with her and Miko's garden. She mentioned that it was happening at night but when she checked at 3am she couldn't find anything. 
So with that information, I figured I needed to take a nighttime trip to Amelia's garden and stake it out to try and find this new spirit. So on the early morning of day 20, I searched around the gardens by the store but couldn't find anything. I stuck around for a bit longer but still nothing happened, so I went back to sleep until later in the day. I spoke to Miko who gave me some new insight on the situation and confirmed that it's definitely happening at night, so I figured I'd try again early tomorrow morning. I spoke to Moby for a little bit in hopes to hang out, but unfortunately I got quite harshly shut down, so after being extremely humbled, I ran away in embarrassment and went home to sleep until the next morning. I woke up at 3am once again and caught my first firefly, which was pretty cool, before heading back to the garden. I waited around for a while until the spirit finally appeared, but I ended up scaring them off when interacting with them. I was kind of confused by this, so after a quick Google search, I found out that I needed to make some carrot cake to lure the spirit and catch it when it's focused on the cake. I slept for a couple of hours before buying some more bath towels along with the recipe for the carrot cake. I also grabbed the ingredients I needed before heading back to my house and baking the cake in my kitchen. Once this was done, I was getting a little bit impatient, so I went to sleep and prepared to rescue our next spirit. The next morning, I was ready and raring to go. I headed straight to the garden and placed down the carrot cake before hiding out of sight of the spirit. And finally, I caught the spirit in the middle of a snack break and was able to free him from being lost. With another spirit freed and able to visit the bathhouse, I was feeling pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. I took a nap for a couple of hours before heading out and paying Lee a visit since Monday had finally rolled around. He spoke to me a bit more about his painting and I was hoping that on Wednesday I might be able to free the spirit. I tried once again to hang out with Moby with no success so I continued on with my day, once again being stopped by Wanyan for no visible reason. I figured at this point it surely can't be a glitch so I ended up googling it and it turned out that this was a spirit hiding behind the chat box icon so I knew that the next time I needed to click on the chat box to open it up and hopefully encounter a spirit. I figured I could go and work at the bathhouse for a day before remembering that it was closed for the new bath upgrade so I was kind of stumped on what to do next. I had a quick look at some of the shrine offerings and recognised a few of them from the store's stock rotations, so I made a mental note to purchase them when they next appeared so that I could donate them to the shrine. I thought it would be fun to go singing with Lee again, but this time I was feeling way too confident in my karaoke skills and I unknowingly picked the most difficult one, which I absolutely bottled, like I really don't think I hit many notes at all. It was such a chaotic mess, like you should have seen me, I was frantically hitting my keyboard trying to keep up. But anyways, to my surprise, I got a C, which still wasn't that great, but honestly, I was expecting like an E, so I'll take a C for sure. This karaoke session actually leveled up my friendship with Lee and he gave me a gift, which was nice of him. But after our hangout session, I went home and went to sleep early. It was officially my last week of spring and nearly the end of this video. I really hope that it's been enjoyable so far and if it's made you want to try Spirity for yourself, then honestly, that's even better. Anyways, I had another strange encounter with Wanyan and I forgot to interact with the text window, but this was happening so often at this point that I knew I wouldn't have to wait long before I could try this again. When researching this encounter, I also read that carrying spicy curry noodles would help to lure the spirit out. So I purchased some from Kenzo's store and carried it on me in hopes that the spirit would appear again soon. I tried to hang out with Gail, but she clearly had better things to do. God, first Moby and now Gail, all of this humbling is really starting to hit me where it hurts, but at least I have my girl Tifa to rely on. I decided to head back to the bathhouse since I hadn't been there for a few days and oh my gosh, look at it you guys, I've finally got all four baths up and running, it's so exciting. And with all of these baths ready, I opened up the bathhouse and spent the rest of the day working there. And whilst I was working, I leveled up my spirituality again, which was great as I wanted to rescue as many spirits as I could before the end of the month. As it started to get dark, I cleaned up the bathhouse and checked the notice board in hopes for another quest, but unfortunately there wasn't, which also made me wonder why Miko's quest was still there after I'd solved it, but that was a problem for tomorrow as it was getting late, so I returned home and called it a night. It is, it is Wednesday, Wednesday my dudes, dude, which means it's now time to visit Lee and check on his painting. He was starting to get spooked by this black spot moving across his work. I could see it, but unfortunately that was all the quest dialogue he had for me at this time, and I was worried that I wouldn't be able to finish this quest by the end of this video, but luckily I was actually able to finish it in time, and you guys will see that soon. 
and went back home to write for a couple of hours, reflecting on Miko's mysterious door that had appeared in her house, along with the spirit that was vandalising her carrot garden. At this point, it was 11am and I decided to head back to the bathhouse to earn some more money as I really wanted to pay to repair the bridge to the spa. Dude, look at this guy's little butt, it's so funny. I have to admit that despite the spirit's disruption to the townsfolk, their reasonings have been quite heartfelt at times and I really have to express my admiration to the writers of the game. I'll delve into this more at the end of the video, but the dialogue in Spirity is definitely one of my favourite parts of the game and strongly contributes to the overall charm of the game. Anyways, after having fun laying out the spirits in a specific way and increasing my spirituality further, I closed up the bathhouse and went to bed. You guys, it happened again. <laughs> day 25 and day 26 crashed during the recording so the footage didn't save which sucks because I actually made some decent progress. I worked in the bathhouse on both of the days and leveled up my spirituality once again and in doing so I unlocked a new quest with Sora. I also leveled up my friendship with Tifa and spoke to Jillian about Sora's sleepwalking and I found out that I need to speak to Sora on Sunday at 2am so I'll have to wait until Sunday to complete this quest. I also set myself the goal of earning 15,000 mulags to repair the bridge to the spa and I'm not gonna lie, I'm currently on 11,000 mulags and I think I could do it before the end of the month. It's day 27 and I am on a mission today guys, I am determined to get enough money to repair the bridge to the spa. Even if I don't get to see the spa in all of its glory during this playthrough, I love to be able to have completed the repair and so that if I make a follow up to this video, which I probably will at some point, then I can hang out with the townsfolk at the spa and increase my friendship with them. My spirituality increased once again, which was great news, and look at all these towels, dude. They're, they're piling up out of the screen. But anyways, I was so nearly at 15,000 mulags. I mean, look at that. I'm like 300 mulags away. How frustrating is that? Anyways, I walked around for a bit hoping to trigger the dialogue with Wanyan about a spirit and luckily it happened and I was able to open the dialogue box to find some spilt noodles, but I wasn't given any indication of what to do next, so I figured maybe if it happens a second time, I'll get another prompt. On day 28, I woke up in the early hours of the morning to catch Sora sleepwalking. I waited outside of his house, which wasn't weird of me at all to do, but eventually he appeared and he looked pretty spooky, I'm not gonna lie, it did creep me out a little bit. But Wanyan and I soon discovered that Sora was being possessed by a spirit who, for the first time, actually knew who Wanyan was and even referred to him hitting the carrot stealing spirit a few days ago, implying that this was no ordinary spirit who had been watching us. This spirit revealed himself to be Ruko, unlike the other spirits I'd encountered, he wasn't lost and he was using Sora's body to run a secret shop on Sundays where he sells things. Ruko also revealed that he heard Sora complaining about his money troubles, so just took up shop in Sora's body and in return it leaves him a cut of the cash, which I don't think is very ethical, I don't think Sora is actually consenting to this and Wanyang kind of just seems to brush it off, but anyways, Ruko is going to continue to inhabit Sora's body on Sunday mornings, but he would also come to visit the bathhouse. Out of morbid curiosity, I just had to follow Sora to this secret shop to check it out when I got stopped by this spirit encounter. Still, I was given no prompt, so I just continued to follow Sora. Ruko didn't have too much going on at his shop, it was mainly maps and spooky clothes, so I figured I'd return to the store another time. I did get an achievement though, which was pretty cool, I think that's my first achievement that I've gotten so far. When I got home I did some writing and it was 5am at this point and I was super exhausted and had definitely messed up my sleeping schedule at this point but anyways I took a nap and woke up at midday and headed to the notice board. Lee's quest was the only one remaining and with one more day left I was determined to complete it and wrap up these 30 days with a satisfying end. I worked again at the bathhouse for a few days to earn enough money to repair the bridge. Dude, look at all these towels that I'm carrying. It's honestly kind of funny, me carrying them all, and also pretty impressive that I'm managing to carry all of these towels without losing any of them. But anyways, I finally had 15,000 mulags to spend on the repairs for the bridge, and on my way there, I figured why not spend some time with Yumi, since I actually hadn't hung out with her very much, and she's pretty cute. I paid to repair the bridge before returning to the karaoke bar. After my miserable attempt last time with Lee, I decided to try the intermediate song and we did pretty well, to be honest. It was kind of tough at times, but I think we did pretty great. I mean, we got an A, which is cool, and it boosted our friendship a bit as well. On my way home, I was finally able to see the spirit hiding in the text box, but this greedy dude wanted more noodles, so before heading to bed, I bought some more and then accidentally ate them, so I had to run back to the store to replenish them. 
It is officially my last day in this playthrough and also my first day of summer in Cozy Cove, which is pretty cool, but I'm feeling good. I'm feeling ready to catch some spirits for the last time in this video. I decided to walk around town with my spirit vision in hopes of encountering the greedy noodle eating spirit and right before I was about to give up, they appeared. After a pretty humorous encounter between the spirit and Wanyan, we rescued the spirit who revealed themselves to have the coolest spirit design by far, like look how sick this guy looks, I love it. After giving me maybe a little bit too much information, this new spirit agreed to bring themselves and their friends to the bathhouse, which was great, and at this point I only had one major goal left, and that was to rescue the spirit that was scaring Lee. I really didn't think I'd be able to finish this quest in time, but luckily my last day happened to be on Monday, so I was able to visit Lee whilst he was painting. It wasn't 9am yet though, so I decided to pay a visit to the new hot springs. The little zoom out whilst I was in the hot springs was a nice touch and it really helped to show off the gorgeous world around me, but once I realised it was past 9am, I ran over to Lee. After getting Loki jump scared by this painting, Lee freaks out, the poor guy, but I managed to speak to the spirit and rescue them from being lost. With another cool looking spirit to attend the bathhouse and a very relieved Lee, I headed over to the bathhouse to work my last shift of the video. Can you guys believe the size of this new spirit though? Like running down the hallway and seeing this guy, I was like, holy shit, okay, this is what we're working with. So thank God I have all of these baths to provide plenty of space. I noticed pretty quickly that this spirit changed the color of the water. I don't know what was happening with the water, but the water was looking a lot healthier to me and I quite like this shade of blue, so I went with it. A newest addition to the spirit family then arrived and thank God I put them in the largest pool with the spirit they got along with because these guys move. It's kind of a fun addition, not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting it and it definitely provides a bit more of a challenge when it comes to running the bathhouse because if they move near a spirit that they don't like, then I'll be losing money and I definitely don't want that to happen. It was now 9pm and I figured that I should probably close the bathhouse since it was getting late, but I did make a decent amount of money, which was good. After cleaning out my crazy amount of towels, I headed to do some writing. I got halfway through my book, which was pretty cool and I am curious to see what happens once I finish the book whether the townsfolk read it and find out about these spirits that have been behind their weird encounters and if I end up writing some follow-up books. I'm really curious, so I look forward to seeing what the game has to offer in the future. After my writing session, it had hit midnight, so I decided to go to bed and finish this playthrough. Spirity has really surprised me. It's got a lot of features that make it stand out from other cozy game competitors, to name a few, the implementation of birthdays, the cooking mechanics at Julian's restaurant and the karaoke minigame are all aspects that I hugely enjoyed and believe contribute to the game's unique selling points. I also really like Jan the dog helping you on your first day as it makes it so much easier to find the villagers and meet everyone and that was really handy. I also adore the music for this game, it's so relaxing and it matches the peaceful world of Spirity so perfectly. The game's design is also absolutely stunning and the combination of this and the game's soundtrack definitely contributes to the escapism into the world of Spirity. I am rambling on a bit here but I also wanted to voice my appreciation for the menu screen. It's so innovative and beautiful and sometimes I'll open the menu just to look at it and scroll through because I love it so much. I've not seen another game's menu screen look like this and it truly is impressive. Finally, I really enjoyed the writing in Spirity. It's humorous a lot of the time, but it's also touching when it wants to be, and it really helps you to form a connection with not only the townsfolk, but also the spirits. Both the townsfolk and the spirits have such funny, but also charming dialogue, which really strengthens the game as a whole. I only really encountered one glitch in the game with foraging the ugly grass, and I could not for the life of me figure out how to fish, but aside from that, I really enjoyed my time playing Spirity, and I highly recommend it to fellow cozy gamers who enjoy games such as Stardew Valley and Coral Island. Thank you all so much for watching this video, it's a bit on the longer side, but regardless, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope that I've inspired you to give Spirity a try, because it really is amazing, and it's always nice to support indie developers. If you liked this video, please make sure to check out my channel and my other videos, I really appreciate the support, and I'll see you all in the next video.